he was a good lad. I actually spoke to the the son, you know, who, who looks terrific, by the way. What a beast. Because I was working at Everton at the time and he came through with his father uh, to Goodison to speak to the club about joining there. But I don't know what happened, whether the agent wanted too much or the player wanted too much, but it never quite transpired. And of course, off he potted to Germany um, <laughs> to become a beast. <laughs> well, he is a beast, isn't he? I mean, you were a, a fantastic centre forward, the classic centre forward, a striker. Um, how do you compare yourself to Erling Haaland? No, he, he's he, he's a, playing in this era as well. The goals he scores, the quality and the number of goals he scores, he's, he's right up there with the best, believe me. You've seen a lot as well, haven't you? I mean... I know you obviously have a strong attachment to Everton, so you could look at Duncan Ferguson, for example. Um, you could look at your time at Manchester City and you look at, sorry, at Oldham Athletic and look at somebody like Ian Marshall. So there have been classic centre forwards. Um, it feels to me physically, as perhaps Erling Haaland isn't massively different than some of those others, but in terms of his attitude and his ability, he seems to be on another level, or am I am I not seeing this right? No, you you. Dead right, Ian. He is on another level, and and they, w I think it's harder now to score goals than it was in our days. So the goal machine that he is, um, he also makes goals. You know, he's a great team player. He works for the team. I'm going back a long way now, trying to think of anybody who's maybe up there. Bob Latchford was a great goal scorer. Um, <clears throat> wasn't quite the player for the team maybe that uh, that Arlen is but um, at, at the moment he's, he's so exciting you can't wait to see him and again well, again, well done Pep you've got him The athleticism that's in football has changed so much hasn't it I mean when you were playing what, what sort of advice were you being given as a player and when you were a manager what advice were you passing on to your players I was very fortunate that I played with great midfield players, uh, Alan Ball and uh, Colin Bell, both of whom had three lungs, I'm sure. They could run all day uh, and nothing would stop them. So the game was on the change. Even when I was a young player, just joining Everton at, at 14. And uh, even those days, the players, after a match, you know, the, the dressing room would be full of smoke, which I hated. And, uh, you know, they, they didn't have the same attitude, but the fitness levels and the science that's available now for these players, makes them, they're, they're super fit. When we compare one era to another, which I think is a little bit unfair sometimes, um, do you think you could make any comparison? Do you think there are players who are, you know, eligible to have played in their era, but also would still play around today? I mean, I can't help thinking that, that Colin would. Oh, Colin, Colin, for sure. You know, but he he was at the um, the the start or, or the just started the the science sports science at the time. But going back to players like Stanley Matthews, who was um, way ahead in his time, so we're told. You know, he he didn't smoke, he didn't drink, he he drank uh, health health drinks if anything, and and he ate a healthy diet. So there were the odd, odd one around at that time. They weren't all you know, boozers and, you know, and smokers. But um, Stanley Matthews was one of the early ones. So I'm told, I mean, I only saw him at the very, very end of his career. But he, he, was, he was a top player. What do you think of this current Manchester City team? How good is it? I think at their best, they are the best. Um, and that's with no bias. And if there's any Liverpool fans listening, and I'm not being a bitch, because um, Liverpool too are a great side, but I think City at their best. I think I think Liverpool probably a little bit tighter defensively, but I think going forward De Bruyne. How did Chelsea ever let go of him with De Bruyne and Alfie Haaland and and all the other top players they've got? I think City are the best. So when you when you brought Alfie in, just tell us a little bit more about that. His dad um, was he anything special? I mean, and and I mean, do you take the credit now for the for the start of the Harland uh, Empire, so to speak? Well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't take the credit. It's a nice coincidence, though. But Alfie was, was a good guy, 
bit of a rascal, always had a smile on his face, you know, with, with a, a little a, a little joke or something or other. He, he was a good guy, and he too was very fit, by the way. The Scandinavian boys are. I had Gunnar Haller at um, Oldham, and he was very, very fit as well. They had a, a, a great attitude towards their fitness. Did you ever meet... Um, Alfie's son. I mean, is, you know, is he ever like a nip around his ankle sort of thing, or he did not start his family at that stage? No, I, I was I was in the room uh, at Everton when when they were trying to uh, romance his, his his father into bringing him to Everton, and I don't know what happened at the time why it didn't go further. I rather suspect it will be agencies, but nevertheless, uh, no. I, I mean, Alfie was a good guy and, and a very very fit boy. Just tell me a little bit while while we're talking. I'll introduce the other members of the podcast in a in a second or two about your involvement now at Oldham Athletic because your son Darren is the chief executive, um, and I did a lengthy chat with him and Frank Rothwell, who's the new owner of the club. Um, yeah. how, how did Darren get into that? And I mean, you must be very proud of of your lad uh, because he, you know, it's this is the club that I know is very close to your heart at Oldham Athletic as well as City and Everton. Well, my son was also um, the, the chairman at at um, Wigan Athletic, you know, until we well we got shafted by the Chinese who put us into administration without telling us. And then all of a sudden, you know, everybody's looking around for a job. Um, both Darren and myself left quite soon after that happened when they went into administration. And he, he's, he's a bright boy, but he's always... Been an Oldham fan as well, um, lives saddle with sides, so you know it, it, it's on, they're on top of the the hill, so to speak. And um, he was the one who who found Frank, and believe me, Frank Frank has has saved the club, you know, because they were about thirty days short short we reckon of fading completely and not coming back. So Frank Frank has, has, every time I see him, I thank him. Put it that way. You're involved at Oldham as well now, though, aren't you? I'm a director, yeah, a director, and, and I have my name on the stand. But uh, yeah, no, uh, you know, I, I'm not a paid director by any means. I am a director, and um, I'm enjoying it too. I'm, and watching football without too much pressure is nice. Does that mean you're sitting in on board meetings and making decisions as well, Joe? I'll be involved in that, yes. Yes, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, whether it be for transfers or, or in or out. Um, uh, at the moment, we, we've had a hard start to the season. And when you look at, at Manchester City, and as I say, as far as I'm concerned, you are one of the greatest managers that's ever been in charge at City. Um, and you were a great player as well. Um, and you're high, highly regarded by everybody I speak to. I don't think I've ever heard a single word, bad word against you, Joe. You're right up there. How, how do you feel about Manchester City? How do you feel about your time? Do you, you look back as fondly as I do on your, your involvement? I've, I've still got great affection for the club. You know, I've, I've um, regularly been to supporters' meetings once, once every year or every 18 months. I think I'm due to go to one next month and uh, they'll certainly be flying high. When, when when I get there, but no, I, I've always had great affection for them. I wouldn't deny that my Everton were my first club, um, but Manchester City and Oldham are certainly vying for second place. And they've come on a bit since you were the City, haven't they, as a club? <laughs> well, we uh, when we took Andy Morrison in, you know, it was I'm not sure how many board meetings it was before we arrived at something like £45,000 or something or other, but it was very hard. You know, we were taking frees and kids. Um, the, the, the club was financially embarrassed, to say the least, and um, somehow or other we got out of it, you know, and it, it was hard. It, we, <clears throat> my record would read uh, relegation first season, although I wouldn't blame myself for that one because um, I got there very late. And then two promotions... And then a relegation, which you could blame me for because I was in charge, although, again, I might plead financially embarrassed. Indeed, and, and I could see what was going on at the club at the time. Uh, obviously, the 99 playoff final is, is one that stands, you know, forever in City's history. 
and you and I and, and all the players were at a variety club of Great Britain dinner that we did. And I wanted that call, you know, that without this club, there would be no Manchester City. Do you feel that way? Do you feel, a, you know, pride in the fact that had it not been that season, had it not been going up with that team, with all the financial problems that you were managing perhaps behind the scenes, that City wouldn't be where they are today? But you, we can't say, you know, it, it's an if and or maybe but, but I, I honestly can't say. A lot of people very kindly say that, you know, that they they credit uh, myself and my staff, you know, Willie Donachie, Asa Hartford, Alex Stepney. You know, we were we were a great staff working together, you know, with Roy Bailey uh, as physio. Um, and it, it was hard. It, it was hard times. As I say, there were too many kids playing before they had, before they were ready, you know, and, and it might have done one of them a disservice. You know, I, I have one in mind that I, I won't say his name because I felt, felt he played too many games too early and he might have been better had we had the grace to, to uh, wait for him, but we couldn't. When Roberto Mancini uh, had that season where City won the league in 2012, um, I, I've heard him interviewed and, and I wonder at what point he really was convinced that City could win the title. Was it when the ball at the back of the net with Aguero? While you were watching 99 in that playoff final and City were 2-0 down, did you give up? Did In your mind, was it was it over? Did You couldn't have possibly expected Kevin Horlock and, and Dickie to get those two goals, could you? No, and, and I don't know whether someone up there had decided these poor fans have had enough you know, and we're going to do something about this. But I did. I turned round to Willie <clears throat> when the when the second goal went in, their second goal, and I said to him, "Well, it looks like Scunny next year will." And Scunthorpe had just qualified the previous day through the uh, playoffs to to get promoted, and it looked like we were going to be playing them. And then, of course, the the rest, as they say, is history. I have an elder boy who left at that stage, you know, couldn't stand the, the pressure of it at all. And then when he got back to the hotel, he was depressed. And then someone told him City have equalised. So he, he ran back in. 